Now, as gamers, there has always been that idea circulating out there that we've all heard at one time or another that Call of Duty is a casual game that requires absolutely no skill and only five hours to complete because it's the biggest franchise in existence, and while there are games that we have seen in this series that fall into that category specifically, that's not always the case as there are Call of Duties that have been shithouse awful, and then there are the ones that knock the narrative out of the park with impactful gameplay. Three ways that Call of Duty can happen, and since Black Ops fell into the great category, where did its sequel end up? Well, the first shift between the games is now instead of the narrative being about a player's character arc, it's now focusing on the main enemy's arc, Raul Menendez, since every action in the game between Alex Mason and somehow being the most boring character in the entire franchise, his son David Mason, has been driven by Raul's moves. From the game starting out by saying this is the guy that kidnapped 20 American soldiers to his motivation for doing all the shit that he does, which is complete Nicaraguan nonsense, to his rise to power and finally ending at his timely death. Apples to apples, Makarov is definitely more insane than Menendez, but Menendez is a better villain since the game revolves around his actions spanning the longest game in Call of Duty, ringing in at an astounding 6 hours. The reason is because the narrative has a hard time floundering around to find a place to end the damn thing. The game could have ended when David captured Menendez, it could have ended when he escaped and launched his master plan, it could have ended after we saved the president, but instead it ends after we invade his safe house and I led him back into military custody because I learned absolutely nothing after what happened last time we did that. However, the game doesn't even end there because after a year of his computer worm being on America's entire network, it activated a secondary purpose which knocked out the entire nation's power grid and allowed him to escape, upon which he tracked down Woods and killed the only surviving member of Mason's squad after Woods accidentally shot Mason and Menendez shot Hudson in his custody, which he followed up by digging up his sister's grave, poured gasoline on himself, and lit himself on fire. So, not only is David incredibly boring, but he's also the least useful character in the entire series. Who knew? Black Ops 2 ends up being the sequel that never held a candle to the original because the narrative plays out like a bad action movie with continuity jumping around like crazy between events since half of the game is played through flashbacks over top of David's modern excursions into terrorist town and it ends up being filled with plot holes and nonsense because the game keeps establishing new plot points that immediately get thrown out the window like the fact that this hypothetical future's global conflict stems from a rare element that apparently all manufacturing uses and and is somehow 95% controlled by China. And the other thing about China's military leader rebelling against his own country and using it to do whatever the fuck he personally wants, and this ends up getting resolved eventually, but in an optional mission with short in-game availability for some reason. And finally, they established that Raul had risen to power because of his ability to persuade people over social media to join his cause going under the name Odysseus, and his disguise lasted about a whole... Three seconds before the game itself shredded his alias. So, two things. One, Treyarch is doing the Platinum Games thing and giving their main character a disguise for a whole two in-game seconds for some weird reason. And number two, Raul Menendez is essentially becoming the future equivalent of a more successful ISIS. Additionally, the problem is that Black Ops 2 got the Modern Warfare 3 treatment and Treyarch sacrificed a ton of gameplay to turn this into a full-on cinematic experience. What passes for innovation beyond the usual pointless quick-time events and baby-level vehicle sections of massive destruction is a base defense game out of freaking nowhere that, to its credit, would have been a great addition if the AI had been worked over so that they were fighting for objectives instead of acting like cannon fodder, and if the game was balanced so that less than 10 of our soldiers were fighting two enemy platoons at any one moment. Black Ops 2 is a game that chose style over substance to an extreme degree, even going so far as to preclude quick time events altogether, and while they are annoying, at least that way, when people were coming up to punch us in the face, these cinematics would have attempted immersion instead of having me just puppet my character around so that he can do all the important stuff while I watch, sitting back on my goddamn couch. Overall, Black Ops 2 isn't a bad game, but in its effort to be all film and no game, it ended up looking worse than Call of Duty 4. Scoreboard check. Victory for gamers check. 
Wait, aren't we forgetting something?